GF is garbage, GF is this, GF. Shame on them. You need to have relationships in this business. And they all struggle with that component. Come in, explain your product, why you feel it's better, what the benefits are, and then show the contractor what you can do for them. I was so impressed with the wall by all yeah. the GF certifications. Yeah. How often do you do that? Like, do um, they come here? How does it all it work? It depends. So this year we had them come here. Um, sometimes we test in house and you know send it off. It just depends. We um, we attend the Wealth Builder. Uh, we sit on the Contractor Advisory Council for the Midwest. So we were in um, Chicago back in November with a bunch of roofers from the Midwest um, and expressed our concerns about things and GAF listened, or so I thought. Uh, we'll, we'll find out. Um, so the ongoing training is essential. If, I would, if you and I had went to that job site today and we saw something that was so egregious that I had to stop production, then I would have. And, sure. and that's something we can do. Thankfully, all of our crews have been with us for so long that we don't have to do that, but a refresher never hurt anybody. And maybe you'll learn something new. I don't stop reading just because I know how to read. I want to read more. I want to know more. So, um, And that's, it's very humbling for me because I'm like you. Like when I go travel to companies, I learn as much from them. Every trip I learn sure. something. I already pick a few things from here. Mm -hmm. But then you see people who are not successful, right. who never bro broke that $1 million, and they will tell you, I don't need to advertise. Right. I don't need this. I don't need to get certified. Yeah. You know, uh, they feel like everybody's against them, manufacturers is against them, warranty are scams, and mm -hmm. there is gaps in the warranties, and we have to push manufacturers and insurance companies, but there are some guys who are not willing to learn, and when I see guys like you uh, joining my school, I'm like, this guy follows me, he's mm -hmm. three, four times more, mm -hmm. I should be learning from him, but he comes to me, learn from me. We'll both learn things. Exactly. And, and that's how I'm always gonna approach it. Um, you know, we talked about Nick Saban. He's probably the greatest college football coach that's ever walked the field. Uh, he started here, he started in Ohio, came up to Michigan State, and he developed his process there. Do you think he stops learning? Do you think he's not in touch with Belichick? And do you, those, that's a network, and you learn from each other. Everyone has a starting point, right? So when I go on the Roofing Insights Facebook page and I see a comment and I think in my head, what? Like, are you kidding me? I have, to, I have to practice the pause before I respond. And then I have to respond appropriately as a senior person in the industry and say, okay, this is why maybe you should think about doing it this way. And then there's guy, I, this happened yesterday. I posted an answer to somebody. Somebody posted about something. I said, why aren't you doing this? And then somebody posted right back. We never do that. <laughs> and, I, and I simply said, it's sometimes it's the sizzle, not the steak, you know? And it, he came back and liked some of my comments later because it registered, right? Like what I was saying. It, the, if you know everything, then go know everything. Like, go, God bless, go know everything, do your thing. If you're smart enough to know that you're not the smartest person in the room, which I am always smart enough to know that, then have your ears open, use them twice as much as your mouth, Pay attention and follow your dream. And if you do those things and you really apply yourself and you continue your education always, right? There's a lot of information out there. Some good, some bad. You got to figure that part out. Your experience is going to guide you. Um, but never stop learning, no matter what. I mean, I hope that at one day at 85, you know, somebody's wiping the drool off my mouth and I'm still learning things from whatever the situation is because that's what we're designed to do as humans, so. Love it. Um, do, you, do you agree that you are a commodity business? Hmm. I never have really thought about that. Are we a commodity business? Mm, we are a service business. And I think at the end of the day, that's just the facts. I mean, let's be honest. In this market and in every other market across the country, 
um, you can find somebody cheaper, right? Or maybe you know somebody. I, you know, we all know, oh yeah, I go to church with a guy whose brother, yes, I, I know, I know. And they're not delivering what we're delivering. So it's completely different. So in the way that a commodity would be kind of level across the board, I don't think that we're, a comm- I think we are a, we are a service industry like any other service industry we are just delivering a different product that's all how about shingles let's talk about shingles yeah. is, is shingle a commodity business and percentage wise mm-hmm. uh, how many percent of success goes to product is it zero eighty percent is it zero it doesn't zero. matter so they are a commodity business we are not uh, they would probably tell you because, because would, no, I know, but why why there is zero and where not? Well, for me, sure, right, for you, in my opinion, sure. Um, how many manufacturers, major manufacturers, in the marketplace right now? Seven, eight. Okay. I mean, depend, well, actually nine, but major probably seven, eight. That yeah, covers right? most because there's the some states. new guys that are smaller or whatever. Right? Yeah. So there's seven or eight, and if we took those seven or eight, and we talked, there's three big ones, right? We mm-hmm. we both know who they are. Yeah. GAF. Certainty, Owens Corning. Well, number four, Atlas is number four, and I would say Atlas is one of the fastest growing. I don't disagree for whatever reason. Yeah, but the big three are the big three. So right. Well, and then we have Ico, the also on the right too. So I guess my question is, if you have, if you are, I'm talking out of the seven. Let's talk top three, and then let's talk the rest. There's movers down there. I'm not saying there's not. And I'm not saying there aren't good products down there, because there are. The top three better be awake, right? Are they a commodity? Yeah, because you cannot continue to do the same thing and just continue for it to go. You better adapt, you better overcome, you better innovate, right? We've seen changes in dimensional shingles. We've seen the Sure Nail Strip with OC. We've seen HDZ with the, uh, what they call mechanical fastener or mechanical bonding you know mm-hmm. whatever and the elimination of the granules in the nail or in the nail zone and then um certainty is the heavy hitter all the time right it's weight 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 so how long till that's not good enough anymore how long until atlas just delivers a product that is just as good and you know is right there with everybody else I think they're probably close, if not there. Malarkey, I'm not 100% sure on. I've heard some things in the market, some grumblings, things like that. And they all have um, issues. I mean, they all have issues. And that's the thing. The issue, so the reason we're not a commodity is because I can change that interchangeable piece at any given moment. If I decided tomorrow that we were going to sell Malarkey, that's what we would sell. If we decided as a company that tomorrow we were going to go strictly Owens Corning, That's what we would do. And as long as I was able to deliver a complete roof system that was quality, installed properly, everything done by the book, provide the warranty, sustain the company, then it doesn't matter. It's all those components I control, they control manufacturing. And at the end of the day, it's oil, fiberglass, and some rocks. Okay. Uh, let me ask you this question mm-hmm. then. What makes a uh, good manufacturer a good manufacturer? You like relationships. Uh, like we discussed Tamco earlier as mm-hmm. you know, not being a good leader, drop sure. everything right away. So if they're a commodity business and shingle itself is a zero attribution to success, uh, what makes you, you know, with the JF, invest in JF and all the training? What, what makes JF stand aside? For us? Yes. Relationships relationship um, we also have a great relationship with Owens Corning and a good relationship with certainty so what makes good manufacture of the shingle so let's talk about aside from making a what we feel is a quality shingle and I know there's a lot of guys out there that are sure. gonna say GF is garbage GF is this GF I'm not concerned well, but but the guys will say that, like you know yeah. you, you will find negative comments or feedback on every product product. and here's the great thing i'm not concerned with their opinion sure right because at the end of the day their opinion isn't making me any money Mm -hmm. so they can have their opinion (laughs) the reality is you need to have relationships in this business so this is part of the other problem for the young guys coming up they don't know how 
they're so focused on trying to sell, trying to manage all these components, right? And maybe they're not, maybe they don't have a good trade, a territory manager from their manufacturer. Mm -hmm. Maybe they are not getting the support that they need. Shame on them, because I know this happened here in this market. There were some trade, there were some territory managers in this market that were doing a terrible job. Um, you know, it's not all about the certifications. It's about what else, right? So one of the things I think the roofing industry struggles with a lot is the support of the contractors. Now, that being said, how many roofers are there nationwide? I don't even know. A ton, right? Here in Metro thousand? Detroit, there's 400, right? 400 roofers? 400 roofers here in Metro Detroit. The seven, eight counties that surround, 400. That's a lot, right? So when you look at it... There's 3,000 in Minneapolis. Right. It's crazy. So well, it's all the hail you guys get. Good luck. So the manufacturers, I think, in this particular industry could do a better job supporting the contractors. Stop marketing to the contractors. Stop selling to the contractors. You know, a hard sell. Come in, explain your product, why you feel it's better, what the benefits are, and then... Show the contractor what you can do for them. Show what that relationship looks like. Do I have access to your, to your graphic design team? Will they help me make flyers? Will they help me with some design on Facebook? Will they help me with this? Can I get... By, by the way, your package includes graphic design with our school, so if you ever need a I know. I just paid a graphic designer two weeks ago to redesign my social media out, up, my yeah, overlays. Yeah, that, that's easy. We can so, get it to you like within 48 hours. So. One of the th that's sure. what the manufacturers that's true need support for you. Yeah, and I appreciate that. And that was one of the things I no no no. At. I'm I'm talking about like that's the true support from manufacturer for you. That's what it means. Well, that's that what... no support from the manufacturer means a lot of different things. What's my rebate program based on my volume? What's my relationship with my territory manager? You saw Colin was here this morning. What am I? What are the deliverables they can give me other than bundles of shingles, right? Because I can get bundles of shingles from seven different companies, eight different companies. What can you do for me differently? And they all struggle with that component. The support for a small, to grow a small contractor into a big contractor, if you find a guy who has the business acumen we were talking about and has got the smarts and can do the things we're talking about, support that guy because he's going to help your business as a manufacturer. It's a small penance, right? A couple hours of a graphic designer's time to a small contractor is a big deal because that's tangible return he doesn't have to deal with. Even for us, it's a big deal. You know, the guy that I paid to do our overlays, it was like, I felt like I had found the saving grace because it's something I had needed to do for a long time sure. and now I finally got it done. The inner networking, so the contractor advisory council for us and the wealth builder, um, are good networking opportunities. So when I sit in the room with the other 2,000 master elites, right? Some of those guys are up to snuff, and we all know there's some of those guys that aren't up to snuff. But I'm gonna seek out the guys when I'm sitting at the round table that are talking, and I know that they're talking about, the, they're on the right track, they know what they're talking about. I'm gonna seek those guys out, and I'm gonna make a relationship. Um, I've got a relationship with a company in Akron who was on the advisory council. And I've talked to that gentleman a few times since then. Um, I've got a relationship with a company in Minneapolis. I've talked to that guy. Because I, I struggle to talk to the guy that's down the street here because it's just, you know, it doesn't You're work. You're competing.